There was a small village in the forest near the town. Residents gathered in the church building and were surprised that the adventurers who arrived were able to defeat so many monsters themselves and get the right things. Bailina told the people in the robes that she found monsters, and Lint destroyed them. The guy denied and added that he did not do it alone and asked to thank Kajero. Bailina replied that since he was a tamer, it meant that this was the way to fight. The girl offered another drink. Lint shook hands with a strange man and he said how good he was and thanked him for the journey he had made in the preservation of their village. The man said that there were a lot of these rabbits, fields were destroyed, cattle were attacked, and ordinary people would not have coped. They would simply have been killed by the number. He continued and told them that they had collected all the money in the village and given it to the guild. As the guys could see, however, it was surprising for them that such a strong man came to a poor village. Another villager confirmed their words and said that compared to the other guy, Upon hearing this, Lint was surprised and asked if there were other adventurers there. The villagers said that in fact, another person had come before them separately from the guild. Plaintive cries came from the barn. The medical girls asked the wounded man in armor to be more patient. The mustachioed man only shouted that he had come all this way for the pennies that they offered him. He rudely asked if they had any potions. The man shouted that it was a terrible village. Lint and Bailina stood at the entrance to the barn, watching the scene with displeasure. The wounded man asked the girls who it was. Bailina asked if this was the self-proclaimed B-ranked adventurer. Lint replied that it looked like that and turned to the man, asking what had happened and whether the rabbits had punished him. The disgruntled man got angry and asked the boy to watch his tongue. He added that he was from a Vermont trading company. Bailina asked a friend if he knew anything about this company. Lint replied that he only knew the name. The villager explained that they used to trade food with them and asked for help against rabbits. The guy asked if they had any problems, to which the man in the hoodie replied that they were charged three times more than they had agreed and this was contrary to the contract. Bailina noticed that if they were completely beaten, they would not be able to help in any way. The injured man from the company loudly asked her to shut up, because he was also a representative of Vemon. So just a few words, and Bailina interrupted him, saying only one word, Flash. The man asked again and was scared because he realized that she was the same a ranked cat, girl. Bailina crossed her arms and replied that she had already received the S rank. Now the rude man was already on his knees and begging for mercy. He sincerely asked for forgiveness. The girl reminded him that he had said something about a potion. The man began to deny it, waving his hands pitifully. He assured that as soon as he was cured, he would immediately leave the village, because he did not want to be forever in debt to them. He apologized again, and Bailina poured the potion over him and informed him that she would sell it to him, so he would owe. The wounds on the wounded man's body were healed. The onlookers were surprised that this was possible, because he was recovering right before their eyes. Lint calmly replied that she could restore anyone even when one ear was left, and added that it was very expensive. The stunned man shouted that he was healthy again and began to bow, thanking the bright Bailina, to which she replied that she would not put thanks in her pocket. The mustachioed man replied that, of course, he would pay and reached into the bag, asking how much he owed. The girl replied that he owed the full price and asked if he knew the price. Gil flew over the mountains, carrying adventurers on his back. Lent told the girl that she was unusually angry, which made her surprised and started asking why, and not because of that guy, because it's impossible to be so greedy. The guy replied that it was a good feeling, and Bailina continued to say that such people only spoil the impression of adventurers. The young man agreed, but said that the man was upset. The former adventurer was sitting on the floor of the chicken coop, his mouth wide open, his eyes completely empty. A little girl poked at him with a stick, and the cat urinated on him, but the man did not react at all. Bailina explained that he would not be able to do anything else in this life, so he could hang the debt on the company. The guys arrived. Lint thanked the dragon for his help and asked what they would do now. The girl offered to take the task sheets to the guild and ask about raising the guy's rank to C-rank. Lint also suggested that we go to the tavern to eat, wash up and sleep. The young people came to the guild building in the village. Bailina slammed her hand on the counter and shouted that she couldn't accept it. She put her foot on the counter and almost jumped over it. The girl was outraged that even though she took over and led, but why didn't they want to raise Lint's rank? The guild worker replied in a bored voice that these were the rules and nothing would be done with her words, because she couldn't raise Lint without strength. Violina screamed at the worker and asked what she knew, because he had tamed the dragon. The girl started screaming and asking if she had nothing to say to that. The girl at the front desk smiled when she heard the dragon tamers and assumed that Bailina was confusing a dream with reality. She added that she knew the same people who wanted to rise at the expense of high-ranking friends, 
so the girl just waved her pen. The catwoman got even more angry and called the employee a fool, after which Lint put his hand on her shoulder and asked her to be quiet. The employee was offended and turned up her nose, and the young man asked what he then needed to do to get a promotion. The guy couldn't understand why the girl didn't believe him, but she thought a little and said that he needed to take a special exam. She leaned over the wooden counter and explained that the exam was easy, for dragon tamers for sure. She also asked to bring the monster with her tomorrow morning. Lint scratched his head and said that he would ask him to come after breakfast. The blonde worker laughed. She didn't believe the guys at all and thought that she wouldn't believe it anyway, even if it happened. The young man asked if that was all, and the girl thought a little and added that he would need to fight the examiner, showing what the C-rank is capable of. The young adventurers came out of the guild building and thought about what was wrong with the employee. Henbane literally puffed with rage and waved her cat's tail. The girl in the guild incredibly infuriated her. She did not like her right away. The cat asked her friend not to pay attention to it, and he awkwardly replied that it was the fate of tamers. Still angry, Bylena replied to Lint that he had too low self-esteem. In any case, the guy's examiner will be B rank. Lint asked if her name was Mira and added that she was cute. Mylna screamed that she was disappointed by the conversations. The girl was angry, and the pleased young man apologized and replied that his sharp tongue was spoiling everything. The young people approached their overnight accommodation. The hotel building was illuminated by a single lantern. The adventurers decided to forget about it for the night, because Lint had an important exam tomorrow. Groans were coming from the adventurer's room. Lint caressed by Lena's breasts, and she said that he was too assertive, but continued to moan. The young people were sweating and Lint buried his face in the bust of the girl, and replied that there was nothing wrong with that, because she liked it, and he could not treat such a beautiful girl any other way. Alina smiled and asked if he would stop there, and the naked blonde guy replied that he would not stop and would enjoy the main course properly. Belina threw back his head and moaned even louder. The young men started sweating and kissing furiously. After a while, the sleeping henbane lay in bed, slightly covered with a blanket. Lint was already packing up and putting on his armor, and the girl was still snoring. He wished his companion a good morning and said that she had slept much longer. Teryuk also tried to wake up the girl. Lint loudly said that it was time for them to go ahead, which caused the cat girl's tail to move slightly and she opened her eyes. Vilina expressed hope that everything would go well, but immediately added that she was sure of it. The naked girl threw off the blanket and stretched, her tail standing on end. The high-ranking adventurer was surprised that there was an examiner in this city and it would be funny if, in front of Lint stood a very tall, muscular, blonde man in armor with a sword. His name was Ghoul and he was going to take the exam. A guild worker with fluffy hair looked at the fluffy monster and asked if it was a subordinate of the guy. She added that he was a very small and cute dragon. Ghoul shouted. I turned to the dragon tamer and asked what kind of farce was this. The man licked the blade of his sword island and said that he was giving the guy time to return home to his mom before he beat him or broke a couple of bones. Lint was a little puzzled and surprised by the man's behavior. He asked before the exam to tell him if he could use pets. The man laughed loudly and said that, of course, he could use everyone, because it wouldn't help anyway. The girl from the guild asked if it was normal to say that, because even if the man retired, he was still a former B-rank. Lint said that this was normal and added that there was nothing else to worry about. He suggested that the examiner start. The girl judge raised her hand and announced the beginning of the exam for the advancement of the adventurer Lint. Gillum grabbed his sword and prepared to attack, but the furry monster suddenly flew at him, and the man shouted that then he would start first. He swung and tried to attack Kiruk, but Kiruk easily dodged. The examiner backed away a little, because he did not believe in what was happening. The girl observer of the world was also very surprised. Gulam denied everything and said that he just hit the wrong way, that's all. The man tried to make a second attack, but Lint suddenly screamed, calling for Kajero. A bright flame engulfed the young man, and the man wondered what the hell it was. While Kuryuk distracted his opponent with his attack, Lint ran up and kicked him in the head, causing the man to fall to the ground. A guild worker was watching the battle and Gulam's sword flew right next to her and plunged into the wall causing the girl to giggle in fright and fell to her knees. Lent took a step forward and asked if he would continue if the man was already disarmed. Gulam was sitting on the ground and holding out his hand to the guy, asking him to stop, because he understood everything. The young man, with the support of Kajero, gained confidence and approached the defeated opponent, complacently putting his hand to his ear to better hear the opponent. The loser shouted that Lent had passed the test and would receive his rank. 
At this time, Bailina appeared behind Gulam's back. She recalled that she taught that a book is not judged by its cover. The man in armor was very surprised to see the girl and called her a teacher. He screamed, asking why the teacher was with this ignorance. The cat girl jumped on the guy's shoulders and happily said that he was her master. Gulam was surprised, and Bailina asked if he wanted her to continue, because the referee had not stopped the fight yet, which meant that the exam was still in progress. Bailina flexed her fists, and the opponent just shook his hands, laughed and asked if she was joking, because it was an individual exam. Without saying a word, the girl slapped the interlocutor in the face, shouting at him to keep his eyes open. She explained that this was why she was devoted to Lint. The man with the broken nose fell to the ground, his eyes looked in different directions, and the guild worker screamed in horror. Lint walked over to Mira and bent down as she was sitting on the ground, leaning against a tree. The young man asked the judge if he had any violations. The girl just pointed at the guy with her finger and muttered incoherently. Lint, engulfed in flames, confirmed and asked to be allowed to introduce his dragon to her. His name was Gil. A huge fire-breathing winged monster immediately appeared behind him, and the guy explained that he was a little late. The girl was speechless and unconscious, and Lint noticed that there was a puddle of urine under her feet, so he asked if she was very surprised. The guild workers loudly asked the guys to accept their apologies, because they could not even imagine that this was possible, so they asked the guys to forget about their mistake. Bailina calmed them down a little and held out her hand, asking for something. Mara gave the young man the piece of paper that was his new guild card. Lint said that the girl worked very fast, and she said that Mr. Lint had now become an adventurer of the sea rank. Bailina came up to Mira from behind and explained that it was because of what happened yesterday. She wanted to rehabilitate herself. The girl exhaled in horror and screamed, begging me to forgive her and not tell anyone about it, because she did not want to lose her job. Tears were streaming from the eyes of the young guild worker. The cat adventurer thought a little and asked if there really was so little work suitable for a girl. Mira continued to beg and added that she would do anything. Eilina was surprised and whispered something in the girl's ear, which made her sweat and nervously swallow saliva. A high-ranking adventurer with fangs shouted at Ghulam that he was next, and also added that he needed to undergo rigorous retraining. The adventurers mounted the dragon and flew away. Lint was holding a C-rank card that a guild employee had given him. He invited Kiruk to see how she glittered and shimmered, although she was only C-rank. The guy added that he was also a full-fledged adventurer. Bailina noticed that very soon he could become a B or a rank. The young man was surprised and asked if she had found a healer. Bailina smiled and confirmed. She thought that the saint was already waiting for them. The guy was even more surprised and said that even if she was familiar with the girl, she was in any case a saint of the divine people. Bailina explained that they could just meet as friends, because she, too, was just an S-rank adventurer, it was the pure truth. Lent held Bailina by the waist and asked if she was both a holy virgin and an adventurer, because it's very talented. The girl smiled coquettishly and said that soon he would see everything for himself, she was overwhelmed with cases, so she asked the young man to look after her. The cat girl grabbed the saddle on the dragon and screamed that they were going ahead for the best healer in the world going on a magnificent journey through it. Lint was a little worried. An elegant female hand touched a beautifully bound book. A girl with long blonde hair stood in the library and thought about what kind of annoying noise was outside, and more importantly, she did not understand what she should do now. The castle in the center of the city was engulfed in flames. A man in armor and helmet shouted, asking the others to break through the gate. Four warriors smashed through the wooden gate with a wooden battering ram, after which all the other armed men broke through them. A fierce battle was taking place within the walls of the city, and the invaders shouted that they needed to find the priest, because he was somewhere here. A blonde girl in a dress stood in front of a large window and wondered how it was on the battlefield. Cardina Karam seemed to be a difficult person with power. He had a huge power that he divided it into two in the lands of the gods. But it seemed that he cared less, because his ability to act, his ability to comprehend the human heart, and most importantly, now was the best time to realize these possibilities. The saint watched what was happening outside the windows of her castle and thought that they needed to use the strongest card in their arsenal while Harrow, the head of the dragon knights, was away. The girl suddenly stopped and turned around, she wondered if he could do it too. A pretty girl came out of the library and walked past a fountain in the form of a stone statue of a naked girl. The blonde stranger saw a fruit basket and a tea set. She pulled back the canopy by the bed and told someone that he was here, but it was a disgusting place, taking away freedom. She felt like she was in a cage with no windows or doors. Suddenly, one of the towers of the castle exploded and its fragments flew to the ground. The knights were surprised and wondered what had happened and how the tower had burst, because it was simply impossible. 
In the rubble of the tower, the fighters saw a holy girl standing and asked her if she was okay. The girl asked the men not to worry and explained that she just did not find a way out. The saint asked where her dad was and forced the men to be responsible. The knights assumed that he was in the capital. The dragon of the young adventurers flew over the city. Lent told his girlfriend that he thought they would fly to the holy lands to meet the girl. Bailina replied that at first she wanted to, but the plans changed, because there would be a person with whom she would like to talk. The girl added that they had to fly to the capital for an hour, so she asked the guy to tell the story, since they had nothing to do. Lent asked what story she wanted to hear, and Bailina said that she wanted to know how they met Kiruk and how the guy became a tamer. Lent was surprised and said that these stories were very boring and boring. The cat girl leaned over to him and replied that it was normal, so she asked him to tell them again. She added that if he did not want to do it himself, then she would force him, and put the young man's hand on her chest. Lent licked his lips a little and replied that since she insisted so much, he would tell her. Because of the guy's touch, the girl began to moan a little. Lent was born in the village of Fremel, on the border with the Holy Land, there was a small guild there, and he was an unregistered adventurer. He remembered how a guild worker in a cap greeted him, and the guy handed her a bag with today's batch. The girl gave the young man a reward, and he thought that it was too much. Nevertheless, the guild employee asked him to pick up the award anyway and thanked him for his work. A small column of smoke was coming from a dilapidated hut in the middle of the forest. Back then, the young man had the only way to survive, to become an adventurer. The young Lint boiled water in a kettle over a small fire, and sewed up his torn clothes on his own, sitting on a makeshift bed and wall. The guy needed to buy equipment, but there was no money, because as soon as there was a chance for big money, high-ranking colleagues took him away. The guy swore and threw the darn glove on the floor. He screamed, asking himself the question, why didn't he have normal skills, at least one? He needed to get at least something, otherwise he would have no money or life. Lint was sweating with anger and thought about how harsh the world was after all. The guy raised his head and looked at the starry sky, which was visible from the dilapidated, leaky roof. He decided to go for a walk, but then immediately fell on the bed, rolled over against the wall and fell asleep. In the afternoon, the future adventurer walked through the forest, cutting the foliage in front of him with a knife. He practiced for the next few days and came out to some unfamiliar place. The guy wiped his sweaty face with his hand and thought that he was lost and it was bad, although in that case there would definitely be something interesting in this place. A blonde-haired young man with a backpack on his back went forward to meet adventures. He crawled under a bush and suddenly found himself in front of the entrance of a cave, which was located in an old tall tree. The young lint wondered if the cave was natural, or if it was ruins from a dungeon. The guy decided to check, but thought that it could be the ruins of something else, but he lit a torch anyway and went into the darkness. The cave was very large inside. The young man touched the stones and realized that they were not real, so he decided that a human hand had definitely been there. He was sure of it. Suddenly Lint realized that it was definitely ruins. He saw the treasures and shouted about how lucky it was. The young man walked towards the light source from the cave humming something to himself on a tray. Suddenly, the guy ran into the wall and screamed that it was the end. He cursed and wondered why they didn't have enough space. There was a sudden rustle under Lint's feet, and he saw a bit of burnt paper. He picked up and began to look at the dirty pieces of paper that were lying on the ground. He had no idea what it was, but it didn't look like a treasure map. On one of the sheets there was an image of a half-naked girl with her legs spread and horns on her head. Lint screamed that it sucked and only porn was hidden there. He threw out the sheet with the woman and began to trample the rest with his feet. The guy couldn't believe it, but suddenly he saw a parchment on which something was already written. It was different from the others. It was high-quality paper, and in the lower right corner of the page there was an illegible coat of arms in the form of an eight-pointed star and keys under it. The young man with the torch assumed that it was the treasure he needed and decided that if he collected everything, then maybe he would earn some money. He began to collect the pieces of paper scattered all over the cave. When Lint was done, he stuck the torch into a crack between the stones in the wall and sat down, trying to read what was written on the paper. Lint assumed that it was a textbook. He tossed the found pieces of paper and shouted joyfully that he had found something unusual. He believed that this textbook was more precious than any treasure, but wondered why it was him. Lint tipped his head back and screamed that it was a textbook on taming. The textbook found said that there used to be ferocious warriors who also forced dragons to obey themselves. They had the skill to control monsters and make them fight for you. Lint rubbed his eyes and thought that it turned out to be useful, but there was also the other side of the coin. 
he wondered how it was possible to walk with tamed animals everywhere, because then he would live alone among monsters. People also did not consider taming a full-fledged job. They scolded the tamers and said that they only did what they used the power of the tamed, but they themselves would not be able to fight. Lent realized that he would not be accepted into the group, because why would they need people like him? The information he read broke even the slightest hopes of the guy. He thought that he would have to be patient, so he continued reading. The young man realized that if he continued to be a low-ranking adventurer, the book would greatly help him in battles, but he did not even have money for training. Lint had only a life in which nothing could be seen beyond ten minutes. The young man thought about it and decided to take everything from life and become a tamer himself. He slapped his thigh, raised his fist and shouted that it couldn't get any worse, so he would be a loner and become a C, rank and be cool. The adventures were full of excitement, so the guy decided not to miss the chances to enjoy them and become a tamer. He thought that maybe this was his calling. Lint lowered the burning torch to the ground to get a better look at what was written. He read the legend of the dragon tamers and thought that dragon tamers really existed. It seemed amazing to him. There was a beginner's manual in one of the sheets, and the guy thought that was what he needed. He assumed that it would tell about the possible number of tamed ones. Lint sat in the cave and read about how to tame, about the difficulties of taming, tricks, all this was important to him. There was valuable information about monsters on one of the parchment sheets. The guy thought that it was strange, because everything was remembered quite easily. He was wondering what kind of monsters he would be able to tame in the future. The young man was looking forward to all this, wondering if he could tame the Minotaur, which would be strong and persistent, or some kind of bird to fly, and, if he was lucky, he would be able to find their eggs. Lint was sweating and thinking that these monsters were too strong, and there would be nowhere to fly for a loner like him. The book also talked about who could be tamed first, so if it didn't work out with monsters, the young man could tame the beasts. Lint got up and shouted that he had to get out already, and he hoped that he would come across someone good. Lint told this story to Bylina when they were both riding a dragon. He squeezed the girl's chest and asked if she was overexcited. Bylina asked the guy to explain what was on the adventurer's book, if he succeeds. The young man added that the leaf, however, was so dirty that the coat of arms was incomprehensible and depending on how you look at it, it could become a star. The girl handed her friend a book with exactly the same coat of arms as on his textbooks. Lint was surprised and asked if she was wrong. Bylina replied that she was sure and knew this coat of arms. The man screamed, asking what it meant, and asked if the book was a price. The girl confirmed all his assumptions and thought about where to start explaining. The guy interrupted her thoughts and said that she was so beautiful when she was serious. Bylina playfully hit her partner on the head and asked why he was embarrassing her so much. Lint apologized, and the cat girl continued to talk about the book with the star, as he called it. The young man interrupted her and asked more and more questions about who wrote the book and what happened to it. Bylina added that she would explain it gradually. In any case, she suggested continuing. Lint assumed she was referring to her breasts, but the girl explained that it was about their history with Kiruk. Lint turned around to look at his furry assistant, but noticed that he was asleep. The guy added that it was more than a meeting, but it was weird. After reading the textbook, Lint tried his hand at various monsters in the forest. He tried to tame the forest goblin, but he only pushed the guy aside and, giving him the middle finger, left. Lint lay with his face buried in the ground and thought that everything had not gone according to plan. He wondered why the goblin didn't agree. All this seemed difficult to the young man, but he had nothing to give in return, and these were even the weakest monsters. Then the guy decided to take the slug, because he decided that this would be enough for the first step. He found a slug in the bushes and called it. There were several slides of slime lying on the ground between the vegetation. Lint concentrated and stuck out his tongue. He noticed that there were five small monsters at once, so he decided to start with the largest one. Suddenly, he looked into the bushes and noticed that the other four slugs were much larger and offended the smallest one. The evil slug stared at the baby. He was very scared and screamed that his blop. Lint thought that those two looked the strongest, but he noticed that the frightened kid was looking at him with desperate eyes and plaintively shouted that his blop. The guy thought that it looked like he had no choice and decided to help the slime, but wagged his finger and added that then he would tame it, so he asked not to complain. The young man told the slug that he would save him, but he would have to obey. The frightened slug shook, as if expressing its agreement. Lint hoped that he really understood him, so he stretched out three fingers to the little monster to tame it. The tamer thought that he didn't look like a creature that could help him, but it was still the first step. The guy knelt down on one knee and performed the taming, after which he began to read the slug's mind and realized that he was thinking about taming. 
The slug turned around and pointed the guy in the direction of his abusers. Lint screamed, asking where he was going, because didn't he need his help? The kid thought that even he could defeat them and it wasn't dangerous, so he just asked the guy to come back. Lint obeyed and decided to take a look. The slug tensed up and began to puff furiously, but at the same time sweetly. The young man told his new friend that he was too pleased, but the monster only asked if he would protect him. The guy rubbed the back of his head and thought that in any case, taming was now clear to him. Besides, there was a limit on the number of simplified ones, so he was going to remove the shackles from the baby. Lint said that he thought he could survive and, waving his hand, came out of the bushes. The little slug looked pitifully at the departing owner and jumped after him. The novice tamer did not understand why he was chasing him, because the slug was already free. The little monster just jumped on him, and the guy asked him to stop. The slug did not obey and jumped on Lint's shoulder. He asked if he was laughing at him. The guy replied that if the kid had nowhere to go, he could follow him, but then he had to behave himself. The monster replied in his own language and waved a small hand, which made Lint laugh and say that it was nice to meet him too. The adventurer tamer was walking through the forest with a slime on his shoulder, and he was thinking that he should have given him a name, because no matter how you look at it, he couldn't be a slime. Lint agreed and shouted Kiruk's name. He also added that the slug looked like jelly. Young Kiruk jumped up and down, and Lint thought that the monster liked the new name. That's how they started traveling together. Lint, as usual, was walking through the forest, but he was thinking that something was bothering him. He turned his attention to his jelly and asked him if there was anything wrong. The slug jumped in an unknown direction. The young man ran after him, asking him to wait. Lint asked your new friend what he was doing, because they didn't have time for it, and Kiruk just asked the guy to follow him. The young man ran after the slug for a long time, but suddenly saw something strange. The blonde man bent down to the grass and saw the bells, they were very rare in this world. Kiruk jumped up and down joyfully, and Lint plucked one flower and said that they were used for complex potions, so he asked a new friend if he really saw him collecting them. The guy took the slug with both hands and lifted it into the air. He said that it was incredible, as if the baby was some kind of god. Lint decided to collect the bells and thought that he had earned money in three days. He promised a friend to treat him today, but Kiruk was crawling right like a bell at that time, leaving a trail of slime behind him. Lint was surprised and sweated a little. He told the monster that these plants were expensive. The young people left the forest and headed to the city, where carts with goods were driving. Donkeys were transporting barrels and other things. Lit came to the guild where his friend worked. She was sitting at the counter, sorting through important papers and thinking about the fact that Lint had not been in the guild for several days, so she wondered if everything was alright with him. Suddenly, she heard male voices asking someone what kind of baby it was and if he was dead. At this time, the young man was molested by men in armor. They clicked on his head and tried to take away a new friend. A guild worker rushed to the guy's aid and grabbed his cheeks. The blonde girl in the hat was named Rimi, and she began to squeeze Lint and examine him from all sides. After finishing the examination, the girl exhaled with relief and said that she was glad that the guy was alive. Suddenly she started screaming and asking where he was, because she was so worried. The young man put his bag on the counter and explained that he had found a good place and collected a lot of bells. The guy handed Remy the plants, and she was very surprised and said that there were a lot of them. The girl decided to make an assessment and drew attention to the slug and asked if it was slime. Lint confirmed and added that he was now a tamer. Remy was delighted and thought that since Lint became a tamer, it was incredible, because he was able to get an unusual skill. The young man began to look around and told the girl that she was talking too loudly, because it was just taming. The men around heard the words of the worker and wondered what happened to that guy and whether he was a tamer. The man with the black eye patch was smoking and told Tom that it was great, because then they could tease him even more. Remy asked a friend if it was possible to touch his monster and what was his name. Lint allowed it and said that his name was Kiruk. The girl gently stroked the monster and said that he was cute and soft. Suddenly, the young adventurer tamer was pushed by someone. He turned around and saw bullying men who asked if the monster could walk and said that he was worthy of a shitty brat. Someone laughed and shouted that it was impossible. One of the men tapped the guy on the nose and said that they were waiting for him outside. Embarrassed, Remy apologized and explained that she couldn't help herself and forgot that tamers were not loved in this world. Lint held his nose and said that everything was fine, because he knew it would be like this. The girl took her friend's hand and said that in any case, it was an incredible skill and now it was clear what he would do. The young man was surprised by the sudden touch, but the girl continued to say that even the dragons would be under him and she would make an assessment, so she asked him to wait. Lint was about to thank his friend, but the men reappeared behind him. 
One of them grabbed the guy by the scruff of the neck and shouted that if he even laid a finger on their angel, they wouldn't just leave him. A guild employee rang the bell and congratulated Lent on the fact that she had conducted the assessment, and he had been promoted to the E rank. In surprise, the guy threw back the man who was standing behind him and shouted, asking if he really got the E rank. Lint walked over to the wooden counter in the guild building where Remy was working. He couldn't believe it and asked over and over again if it was true about the E rank. The guy didn't understand why and asked if it was because he had accumulated points. The girl replied that this was also the case, but what he brought was not part of his route. He took a risk by going to a zone with a lot of monsters and so far he had only walked in safe zones, which meant that the guild recognized his courage. The young man explained that he just decided to change his life a little, and the girl smiled sweetly and replied that the first steps were the most important for adventurers. Lit joyfully ran home in a hop, humming something to himself. Walking through the city, he told Slug that a lot had happened, but it was a good day. His first partner suddenly became a big shot, and Remy praised him too much. The young man called himself a master tamer and decided that it was a great start, so he went ahead. Life was in full swing in the city, Lint was standing outside the guild building, and his girlfriend, a worker, was squeezing the already grown, up sweet Kuruk. The girl noticed that he was getting fluffier every time, so she no longer believed that he was a slime. Remy wondered if it was because of domestication. Lint replied that he did not know, but he did not think that the slime would change so much and learn to fly. The fluffy monster took off, the girl said that it was cute, she also added that she had a couple of good news. Lint politely asked her to tell him, and the girl handed him a bell and rang it. She happily pumped, congratulating the adventurer Lint, because he was promoted to the D rank. The young man and his monster friend screamed with joy. Remy handed the guy an envelope tied with a beautiful ribbon, which contained his identification card. Lint thanked the girl and did not believe that it was true. The guy hugged the furry monster and said that he had done a good job the last two years, so the promotion was thanks to him. The girl said something else and handed her friend the letter from the head of their guild. The surprised young man opened his mouth and screamed loudly. The men in armor, who were sitting in a bar nearby, heard everything and wondered if the head of the guild had really written to him. Lint started turning his head in different directions and shouting, asking if he could read the letter. Remy confirmed and told the guy to act. Lint looked at Bailina's ample breasts, and she asked him what was written in that letter. The man replied that there was a congratulation about the promotion. The girl was surprised and asked if that was all it was. Lint added that there were a little more surprises. The head of the guild of their town was also a tamer. He sent the guy to the capital. During his story, the young man caressed his girlfriend, which made her moan loudly. The girl could barely utter one phrase and said that this was what the guy came to the capital for. Suddenly, the cat girl turned around and asked, what happened after? Lint said that he found a cave and lived there. Bailina understood everything and added that they might need to return to his homeland. The guy was surprised and asked if she wanted to go back to that terrible place. Bailina said that it wasn't so terrible. In any case, he was a dragon tamer with an S-rank companion. The girl grabbed the young man by the shoulders and said that first they. Lint interrupted her and finished the sentence himself, saying that they would go to the capital first. Bailina did not agree to this proposal and screamed that she wanted to be right here, and was very excited. The young man was scared and also screamed, asking her just not to do it in flight. Bailina put her companion on the saddle and replied that there was no place where you couldn't have sex. The helpless Lint could only scream. The bell on one of the towers of the castle in the capital rang. An armored man with a sword in his hands shouted that it was a dragon attack and ordered the others to prepare crossbows. The archers climbed the fortress wall and lined up in a row. They pulled the string on their bows and loaded their crossbows. Other warriors were preparing a ballista. They set fire to a huge arrow and prepared for defense. At that time, Lint and Bailina were sitting on their dragon Gila. They were flying peacefully towards the city and the young man said that they could not just fly on a dragon. The girl asked her friend, wasn't this his debut as a dragon tamer? Gil was flying over the city and Lint asked if there was anyone in the guild who didn't know him. The girl looked down and noticed that the people looked like they were preparing to attack the dragon. The young man asked Bailina if she wasn't a high-ranking adventurer. The cat smiled and replied that there was nothing wrong with jumping from the dragon. She was going to go down and explain everything to people, and then come back. Before Lint could understand anything, his girlfriend had already jumped from a great height and landed, grabbing a spire on one of the roofs of the building. The guy on the dragon understood everything, but he couldn't help but worry about the girl, but he decided to fly higher anyway, because at such a height arrows and bolts could reach them. The young adventurer wondered who Bailina would like to introduce him to in the capital. The guy looked down and thought that it looked like all the problems had already been solved, 
because Bailina was standing there surrounded by soldiers and waving at him, asking Gil and Lint to come down. Flying up to the ground, the guy shouted that it was a pretty peaceful solution for the cat girl, and she asked what it should mean. Astonished knights and warriors in Beret stood with their mouths open. They could not believe that they had seen a dragon tamer. The girl pointed her finger at the men and explained why she said that to a friend. Because it was real. Lint jumped off the dragon, and the men were even more surprised. The adventurer approached his dark-haired girlfriend and saw a male figure with a staff in the crowd. A man in a robe was walking towards the young people and said that he was flattered that Mr. Lint had succeeded. The tamer was surprised and asked Alina if she wanted to introduce him to someone. The girl asked to show them Kajero. Lint obeyed and called the fire monster, which caused his entire body to be engulfed in bright flames, and the muzzle of the fire monster appeared next to him. A man in a dark robe with a mustache and beard said that it was an obsession with spirits and the summoner was a high-ranking firewolf. Bailina smiled and replied contentedly, noting that Lint was so good, so she asked the men to put away their shells. The elder with the staff smiled and replied that it was his mistake. His name was Violento, and he was the head of the capital guild. The blonde tamer did not immediately understand what he had heard, but after that he screamed loudly in disbelief and asked the man to wait. Violento laughed and turned around, saying that further conversation was clearly not for the street, so he asked the young people to come with him. The young adventurers entered the walls of the castle, which had beautiful high ceilings and stone columns. Lint looked around and shouted to his friend that it wasn't what she thought. The guy quietly asked why the girl took him to the head of the guild, and wasn't it too much. Bailina calmly replied that he was the head, but he used to be the same adventurer, so she asked the guy not to be afraid. The young man did not understand anything and asked the girl not to speak so casually, but Bailina replied that the sacred virgin and she were both S rank. Lind was confused, but he understood everything. The head of the guild opened one of the doors and asked the guys to settle down. Bailina jumped on the couch, and the man added that if they needed anything, let them say so and he would bring it right away. The adventurers and the head of the guild were sitting in a spacious room with a fireplace, a catwoman was lying on a couch, and a blonde guy was modestly sitting on a chair. Lint said that he did not think that this room would be different from the rest of the guild, and the man explained that many different important meetings took place in this room, so the secrets were well kept here. Bailina added that this room was also called Violento. The man in the robe tensed up and reminded the girl that he was a loving husband, so he asked her not to forget about it. Bailina giggled and asked, what about those ladies who sometimes came here? The girl realized what she had said and explained to her friend that she had not been here yet, but the guy was no longer worried about it. Bailina jumped on Lint and screamed, asking if he was worried about her. The guy waved his hands and replied that he was just joking. The bearded elder thought a little and invited the young people to get down to business right away, because it was necessary to discuss further actions. Violento suggested that we talk about the Holy Lily. Bailina got off her friend and shouted resolutely that she had to save Lily. Lint clutched his head and did not understand how much his friend knew the saint. The girl told the head of the guild that her heart was breaking. The man and the guy were surprised, and Lint asked if their plan was just to invite her to the group. Bailina crossed her arms and explained that Lily, or Lilia, and she were sisters and students of Master Violento. The guy was surprised that his girlfriend studied here and asked why then she helped him, because the saints occupied a fairly high position in the social kingdom. The man said that he would explain to the young man the current state of the divine kingdom, because Bailina did not understand him well. The guild leader led the adventurers to a huge map and pointed his staff at one of the areas marked on it. It was a map of the kingdom, one of the smallest and northernmost states that Violento pointed to. It looked like the surrounding people attacked this country quite often. Lint asked if it was because of divine protection. Bailina replied that it was the kingdom of God, the land of wizards. The guy screamed that he couldn't, because it was incredible. Bailina explained that only wizards could be born there, and children who could not use magic were simply killed. Lint understood why no one was attacking them and decided that they should be extremely careful. Violento said that a coup d'etat had recently taken place in this land of the gods, so the man asked the guy if he had heard of the despotic rule of Pope Zarathustra. Lint replied that his hometown Framel was on the border, so he knew a little about this country. Its inhabitants claimed that a certain religion dominated in all corners of the country, worshipping the Pope, who was considered a representative of God, and people could not freely leave the country. Bailina replied, and the head of the guild added that many people in the country felt the same way. Lint tensed and thought. He asked the bearded man in the robe if they were planning a coup. 
the head of the guild confirmed and added that there was a person here who collected everything necessary for this. Cardinal Karim was the second man in the kingdom and the leader of the coalition against the Pope. He fiercely opposed the Pope and now, when he dealt with the Pope's vassals, he bared his fangs. A man in clothes with church attributes shouted, calling for the dirty Pope to be killed, because the tyrant was supposed to die. A man stood in front of a crowd of people and stretched out his arms, saying that God blessed their lands. Bylina stretched a little and said that they were both tyrants, but such things were fair if they were put by the audience's favorite. Lent clarified, did this mean that there would be a coup? The girl confirmed and added that, unfortunately, Karim made one important mistake, and she lost Lily and Dad. Lent realized that the saint was with the Pope, and the girl added that she thought that Lily remained on his side, but they should have already entered this kingdom. Bylina received a call for help from Lily. Did Lint specify whether they helped both the Pope and the Saint? The cat girl asked the young man to listen and explain that Lily wanted to be free. And, as she had said before, she was the same adventurer. In such a turmoil, the status of a Saint was unimportant. Neither the Pope nor Kari would have allowed this, because the existence of Saints was important in the Kingdom of God. The saint is said to be closed from God. Her influence is enough to legitimize them for any party. It is not something that can be carried with you as a divine grace. The situation was becoming an interethnic problem, and the Pope intended to use the military power of this country for his return. Lint realized that if this happened, magic on one side and soldiers on the other would collide. The head of the guild explained that in order to avoid this, he was going to interfere with all attempts to meet the Pope and the King. Lint said that the guild was out of politics, which means it was an illegal job. The man in the black robe confirmed Lint's words and added that he was bequeathing this secret mission to him. The guy tensed and sighed, realizing that he had been given a secret assignment from the guild. Violento offered 100 gold coins for the job. Lint screamed in surprise and horror. He asked to wait and asked how many silver coins were there in one gold coin. The guy tried to count, but it didn't work out enough. The man interrupted him and said that in addition to this, although it was his personal request, it was also possible to be promoted to the B rank. 